What's going on guys? Well, welcome back to another Aquascape tutorial. Behind me is a big racking system. You can probably see most of it. Yeah, you can. Um, on this side here, we've got all my shrimp tanks. Well, I've got two sets of shrimp at the moment, but one of the first shrimp I got, and my absolute favorite so far anyway, is the crystal red shrimp. And today we're gonna set up an Aquascape for them. So here are the crystal red shrimp. You can't see, you know, all of them, but there's 20 in there. And uh, you can see that the scape isn't great. I just put some plants in. I wanted to get the sort of the bacteria just growing all in the tank and get that sponge filter at the back all cycled. So they've been in there for several weeks now. It's doing really good, but we can do something better than this, can't we? I still want to have quite an open sort of look to it, but I also want it a little bit more sort of controlled and designed than, than what we've got. It doesn't look bad. It looks nice, doesn't it? But I can do better than that. Now, when it couple of vlogs back I did say I was just going to keep them all just as they are and then just concentrate on the shrimp and not worry about the skate but I can't do it I just can't do it I, I can I, when you know you can do better at something I think that you should always try to do that and, and that's what we're going to do nothing complicated just a nice simple aquascape that shows off the shrimp one important thing to remember though is that crystal reds or any shrimp to be honest they don't like big parameter swings in their water so what I want to do is take the filter out drain out most of the water catch the shrimp put them all into a bucket together and when i fill the tank back up after i finished escape 80 percent of it will be the same water it'll have the same filter and then a little top up with some clean 20 percent water and you know there you go that's going to be absolutely almost the same as, as it is now but just with a different you know escape Click subscribe. okay so that's all the shrimp out now there's no fish in this tank but look you can see all the water fleas popping around and that's probably because there is no fish in this tank it, they normally would eat those but that just goes to show how good the water quality is because you know you tend to only get that amount of water fleas in healthy water or cycled water at least i don't know i, I just think it's a good sign to have more fauna in your tank all right <laughs> Maybe I just made that up, I don't know, but let me know in the comments section if you know if that's true or not. Water fleas tend to mean that the water quality is good. I swear I read that somewhere. So the shrimp are down here in the bucket and then in this one's just some more water, but they'll stay in there for the time being. I'm, I've kept that Blixer Japonica in there because I'm gonna be using that in the next scape as well. The rest of the plants have gone, whoa, that's really bright. The rest of the, of the plants have gone into this, one, one of those tanks. So just drain, drain the rest of the water. I also wanna save all of that Aquasol as well because that'll be perfect in the next setup. Basically recycling everything we can because it's just better for the shrimp that way. So we're all set up guys and ready to start scaping. Now this light is not staying on there. I just borrowed it, you know, for the purposes of demonstration. Uh, I'll leave a link to that one if you are interested. It's the same as the one I've got here on my uh, Ember Tetra tank. So it does give a really nice color and sort of strength. Not too much, not too little. It's low budget, so it does the job really well for my kind of tanks. And this one is the Strip Light 910 Pled from All Pond Solutions. Really nice light, it does the job. It, again, you're not gonna get fantastic color renditions. It's not, you know, full spectrum red, green, and blue. LEDs, it's just white LEDs. But for what we want and for what I like doing, it works a treat. Now, when I'm setting up an aquascape, I like to put in some like biological filtration as well under the substrate. Now that's even more important in this aquarium because it hasn't got like a big hang on the back filter or a canister filter. It's just gonna be having these little sponges that we've got. So any more surface area for biological filtration is just better. Bacteria can colonize it, it's awesome. So I like to use a layer of crushed lava rock. Thank you. 
And there we go, a nice thick layer there. Well, not too thick, but it's a, that's lava rock, crushed lava rock. It's really porous. The water can sort of flow through it and bacteria will colonize this layer as well as every other layer as well. But you know, lots more in this layer because of that surface area. Now on top of that, we want to put some nutrition. So in here is just some like nutrition capsules you can get on the internet, loads of brands available. Best thing to do though is to split them open and pour them over the surface. For this size tank, I'm going to use about five. Okay, so we now on top of that next, what was that? <laughs> anyway, on top of that next is the aquasol that we pulled out of this tank and we're gonna reuse it again because it's just gonna be really good for the tank and the shrimp. So although that is a nice layer, that isn't quite enough to plant into. You could try, but stuff will keep trying to uproot. So I've got some more aquasaur down here. It's basically the fine graded uh, aquasaur from Tropica. Really good from the shrimp, for the shrimp, sorry. And we can just pour a load more on top. I probably, I wanna bank it up at the back more. Look, if I come low, you can see here, it's not much of an angle going on and you get much better results if you get a slanted angle. So like more like up like that, you know what I mean? And then we can just, put that fresh stuff on top and it will be planted into it so easy then. There we go, there's our angle look. You can see from the side there, much, much more depth now. So you might be thinking, where is the sponge filter gonna go if you've got that much height at the back MD? Well, I've come up with a solution. So here is the sponge filter in question. I've just put a little sucker on it and then I can just stick it to the side like that, just underneath the water surface and it will be better than that when I've done it. But yeah, look, right off the bottom, and it doesn't really impact on any view. We can have all our plants almost all the way up to it. So now that's done, I wanna start you know, planning our hardscape. Now I'm fortunate enough to be able to have this cool section over here, which has got tons of hardscape from. Now it's just a small tank, remember, isn't it? It's just little, so we don't wanna start chucking in tons of different, different elements. You can do, but not for shrimp. Shrimp, you wanna be able to see them, wanna see how well they're doing, numbers, if they're multiplying, dying off, whatever. So for that, I'm gonna do an Irigumi skate, which is actually just rock only. Now the rocks I've got to choose from, I, originally I was thinking about something like using this sort of rounded rocks, but then I remembered I had this elderly stone. Now I picked this up from Aquarium Gardens. All of my hardscape, by the way, are from Aquarium Gardens. They provided me with everything that we need. Go and have a look, it's an awesome shop. It's got loads and loads to choose from. But this elderly stone look, Look at it, it just looks aged straight away. So I'm gonna try and come up with something in there. Now remember, if when you're using stones, try and use odd numbers, because even numbers look silly. So if I put four stones in there, it doesn't really work, but if I do five, I can do three at the back, two at the front, different angles. Anyway, just get on with it. Uh, this might take a while. Well, I thought it was gonna take a while, but it didn't. So there we go, just stick it in, looks good. Looks like a pile of rocks has fallen on the floor and that's exactly the look I want. Some people might be like, oh, the uh, the strata lines are going in a different way to this. I don't care about that, I'm not worried. This is not that sort of aquascaping channel. This is realistic stuff that you guys can do. Let's get it in a tank like that. That looks cool. So you notice I've separated this small one at the front from the back though. So that just gives a little bit more interest. Don't just put it in in one neat spot. You've got angles, one's going that way, one's going that way a little one at the front and then the, the monolithic sort of one at the back and then the plants can be everywhere else but i want to keep the planting really simple and i want to go for just like a hair grass carpet because the crystal red shrimp are really going to stand out on that green carpet aren't they the, the whites the reds oh that look great but first of all before we get that planting done i need to prepare the hair grass so we are over by the md sink area that's when you know business is about to go down here is the hair grass it's just in these little pots you just peel the lid off pour the liquid out and split them up into little tufts and then you can plant the tufts let me show you
That's all that hair grass prepared. So you see those four, whoa, my discus are going nuts. Guys, you all right? Oh, by the way, this is my other studio, if I haven't shown you that already. So there's lots going on in here, lots of other tanks. If you're interested in any of these, take a look at some of my other, other videos and you'll, and you'll see them. They've all been done quite recently, actually, because I've only been in this studio for a few months now. Look at this beauty, it's doing well. No CO2 on any of my tanks, by the way, guys. You don't have to have CO2. It's better if you can, but you don't have to. Look at these beauties, hello, hello. Stunners. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, back to the back to the job at hand. So that's four pots of hair grass. Probably a little bit overkill for the size of chrome we've got, but it's always better to have more plants than you need. And that's cost me, what, £20 or $25 to get a tank looking awesome. I think that's a good deal, really, with the amount of plants that I've got there. Look, that's going to cover most of the surface. But I also want another type of hair grass. One second, follow me. Ah, here we go, look down here. So it, I've got this one as well. This is a much taller version. So the other one in there is the short dwarf version. This is Eleocaris acicularis, whatever. The taller version of the other plant. So we can have one sort of area that's just got these tufts coming up and I'm thinking they'll look really good in, you know, just in this sort of middle gap here or, you know, surrounding this big stone. And then we can have all the smaller ones all around it. And then that nice bit of Blixer Japonica that I've got in, in the bucket with the crystal reds, that one can go sort of as a centerpiece, if you like, maybe this area here, you know, the main focal point plants, you've got the main focal point plant, oh, that's hard to say, and the main focal point rocks, and then just the hair grass, oh, it's gonna look great, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's looking great, isn't it? I think so anyway. I really like that sort of central piece of uh, Blixer Japonica that's just really popping and it's gonna really come into its own. It'll actually grow quite big and sort of burst, if you like. The background uh, Eleocaris will grow much taller and cover the whole area eventually. And the the nice hair grass that we've got in the foreground will actually stay this size, which is nice. It, it will grow a little bit, but not too much, but it will go horizontal and just cover the whole area. So that should look great with all the shrimps sat on top of it. But that said, I've actually got another plant, one of my other tanks, that will add some really good detail to this tank. Okay, so it's not this one, but this one here is my little mini pond that I made. Oh, good two to three months ago now. It's one of the first ones I made in the studio other than the big Asian aquarium that you can see there. But look, the plant I'm talking about is Hydrocotyl Japan. This stuff here, it's like little mini clovers and it just looks so, so nice. It's growing a bit too much in this area. That was the plan, but obviously not to start covering the intake and everything like that. So I'm gonna hack it back a little bit, steal some of it, put it in that new tank. There we go, look, how cute is that all looking, especially with those little bits of detail coming from the Hydrocotyl Japan. Yeah, really nice addition there, but there's one thing still missing from this tank. New setups, which technically this is gonna be a new set, it's not, but it is, if you like, because all the plants are new and only just gone underwater. Well, the uh, Eleocaris has anyway, but I think it needs some stem plants, so I'm gonna put a nice big bunch of pearlweed in the back pearl weed grows fast it pulls nutrients from the water column it's something we can maybe take out later but for now i think in that back corner section there it'll look really good just like a nice sort of mounding of it so that looks a bit funky at the moment it's hard to tell but we'll fill it up with water see how it sits and we can play around with it add more you know get like a nice triangle composition going on we just see once it's filled up with water So we're filled up and the top's clear. It's a little bit misty in the water because obviously it's only just been filled up. It's gonna be, but let's get our filter fitted and that should clear in no time at all. OK, 
Okay, so we're clear. Now, I'm the most impatient guy ever, so I stuck in this little filter with a load of filter floss rammed into it to reduce the flow so it didn't blow everything everywhere because you can't you can't actually like adjust it. But it's done the trick in no time at all. Really clear. Ordinarily, I would have just done like a 50% water change, but I can't do that on this one because I need to keep the water parameters the same. Now that they are, it's brilliant. I can put the shrimp in. It's not in its place, but for the purposes of demonstration, I'll do it all here as part of the video. Maybe put it up there at the end with the, with the whole lot. But anyway, you don't care or need to know about that. Let's get the shrimp in. Oh, you may be wondering, guys, why I haven't put any red plants in at all. And that's because the crystal reds are obviously red and why I don't want any red plants to distract from the beauty of the shrimp themselves. <laughs> boom straight away they're in they're getting to work they're happy there's that monster one look at that the goliath the behemoth the godzilla of the shrimp world look at it look at her it's a girl by the way you can see by that sort of undercarriage being under <laughs> oh, awesome look at how good they look they're popping they're really popping exactly what i wanted to see the red's looking really good against the green and the black oh from a distance look loads of them so in total i think i've got about 20 possibly a few more i'm not entirely sure i can't remember but i asked for 20 but i think they just sort of scooped them up and chucked them in for me <laughs> they normally do look how good that rock looks as well that elder stone that's from remember aquarium gardens you can get it there it just looks so good looks like an instantly aged like that shot there look there you go let me cut out the soil so it's just like that that looks like something that's been sort of growing for years and years didn't it Oh, loving it. it looks so good it's quite a good little angle as well double trouble oh no i've just realized something i've not left a space for their cute little feeding bowl i, I think i could squeeze it in there maybe just move some of those yeah hang on yay there we go look fits in there nicely and i don't think it spoils the viewer talk down here you can't even see it at all look just about see it there, but that's okay. You need a nice little area for them to get their food. They'll know it's there. It'll be easy to clean up because I can use a, uh, what are they called? Turkey base to just go in there and take out any that they haven't eaten. Always best to do that with your shrimp, by the way, because you don't want to leave foul food in there. To be honest, they'll only eat what they want and then they'll just leave it anyway. So you'll know if you're overfeeding the tank or not. But now I've got to move it back up there. So <laughs> why didn't I just move it up there in the first place? Oh, well. So the shrimp are doing great, but I think we want to utilize the little feeding tray that I've got. Oh, this guy's gonna to need to get out though. Gonna put some food in for him and just watch him go nuts in a time lapse. I love looking at that. So I'm gonna be feeding the shrimp the stuff from Denelay that I picked up, Shrimp King 5 in 1. It seems to have everything in it. It's got snow pops, leaf mix, complete protein, and mineral. So we've got to put it in the tube, let it float down into the tray, and then we can watch these little monsters eat. Well, they all seem to be enjoying that, which is really awesome. Now, look, there's already been a malt into the tank. I just saw these guys munching on it. That's really important to leave the malts, which is obviously what the pops off the skin. You leave those in the tank because they'll consume them and it'll just give them more sort of calcium, which is what they need to grow their shells again and continue to cycle. Oh, hello. Oh, come back. Don't be afraid. Oh, that's my killifish in there. It's the male one. He, uh, 
he came to say hello and then he, he went back but th there's a full video on the killerfish by the way guys if you just go and have a look at my video list but the tank looks great and we're off to a flying start there is quite a lot of food in that tray so any of the uneaten food i'll just siphon back out and oh look look right at the back there in the background you can see there is betty the beast the biggest shrimp in the whole tank my favorite now obviously because you gotta have a favorite haven't you? are you allowed a favorite they're my children i can't have a favorite but i do have a favorite oh no so there we go guys, the first properly scaped tank in the shrimp rack. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget, hit the like, the subscribe and all that stuff, and I'll see you on the next one.